In this video, we're going to practice naming carbohydrates and converting Fisher to Hayward projection, alpha aldoses and ketoses. Recall from the previous video, we used the formula prefix plus number of carbon atoms and the suffix. For the prefix, if you see a ketose in the Fisher projection, the prefix would be keto. If you see an aldehyde, the prefix would be aldo. For the number of carbon atoms, we use the simple prefixes try for 3, 4 tetra, or tetra, but we drop a, 5 pent, 6 hex, 7 hept, 8 oct, 9 non, 10 dec, and etc. And for the suffix, we always add os. To determine the D or L configuration, we look at the highest numbered chiral carbon. If the OH or the hydroxyl group on the highest numbered chiral carbon is on the right, this is a D sugar. If the OH on the highest numbered chiral carbon is on the left side, this would be an L sugar. So for example, if we're going to name this ribulose, this one is the carbonyl group attached to two carbon atoms. So this one is a keto because this is a ketone. Then we count the number of carbon atoms present. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five is pent. So we write pent and we add the suffix os. So this is a keto pentose. Now let's look at the D or L configuration. The chiral carbons here are carbon number three and carbon number four. Number four is higher than number three. So we check the hydroxyl group on the highest numbered chiral carbon or carbon number four. The hydroxyl group is on the left side, so this is an L sugar. Now let's have galactose. Galactose, you see an aldehyde. So this one is an aldo. Then count the number of carbon atoms. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is hex, and then we add the suffix os. Aldohexose. The chiral carbons are the following, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 is not counted because this is not chiral. And the highest numbered chiral carbon is number 5. And carbon number 5, the hydroxyl group is on the right. So this is a D sugar. Now let's convert Fisher projection to Hayworth projection. What I usually do is to number the carbon atoms. So here I have 6. So I want you to look at this. This oxygen is more electronegative, meaning it tends to attract electrons. Therefore, the electrons in a bond will go towards the oxygen. This will leave this carbon atom positively charged. Now remember, this oxygen or oxygen has lone pairs. So this lone pair would be attracted to carbon number 2 because it is positively charged. In turn, the electron in the double bond will go to this oxygen, making it negatively charged. When that happens, a free hydrogen atom from the solution will bind to it. So from this structure, this double bond will be gone. This hydrogen will join this oxygen, forming an OH. And this one will form a bond, giving you this one. Okay, now remember, ketoses, they form furanos, okay, a five-membered ring. So I will draw a five-membered polygon. Okay, so this oxygen here is this one. Then we start numbering from number two, three, four, five. So this is always carbon number two. Then let's add the bonds. Now you have to remember that you have a CH2OH here. Alright? So the rule is, if this is an L sugar, the CH2OH is down. If this is a D sugar, CH2OH is up. Remember this is an L sorbose. So this CH2OH, carbon number 6, will go down. So the format, it's HOH2C. So it's the same as CH2OH. But I just want to emphasize that it's the carbon that is bond to this carbon, not this hydrogen. And then, then remember, down, right, left, up. So everything on the right side will go down. Therefore, this OH will go down. Now, let's distribute the atoms. So where would this CH2OH go? So this would go upwards because your OH is downwards. Then, let's distribute the remaining atoms. This is on the right side, so it will go down. This OH will go up. This OH is down because it's on the right side. This one is up because this is on the left side. Now, this hydrogen supposedly should go down. However, your CH2OH or methanol 
already took that place, so it will be forced to go up. That's the Hayworth projection of L Sorbos. Specifically, this is called a Beta L Sorbos. Or if we're going to use the complete name, it's a Beta L Sorbo Furanos. Because this is a five-membered ring, it's a Furanos. This is Beta because this OH is on the right side. Or you can also use the configuration of your OH and the CH2OH. If they are on the same side, this one is downwards, this one is downwards. This is beta. Now what if this OH is on the left side, like this? So you will still have the same Hayworth projection, but your OH now would be upwards. So notice that this OH is upwards, so this methanol or CH2OH is downwards. They're pointing the opposite direction. So this is an alpha sugar. So the name would be alpha L sorbos or alpha L sorbofuranos. To make it clearer, let's discuss this step by step and let's have the easier way. For example, I have D fructose. This is a ketose. So again, the rule is ketoses usually form furanos, a five-member drink. Aldoses usually forms a furanos, a six-member drink. This is a ketose, so you will need a five-membered ring. Again, in a bond, there are electrons, so this oxygen will get all the electrons, making it negatively charged or partially negative giving this carbon partially positive. Same thing happens with the hydroxyl group. So this oxygen, since this is more electronegative or has the tendency to attract electrons, this will be negative, this will be positive. What would happen is that this negatively charged oxygen would make a bond with this positively charged carbon here. And this negatively charged oxygen will get hydrogen, giving you this structure. So basically, this one forms a bridge with the carbon, this oxygen combined with hydrogen to make an alcohol. Now again, remember this OH could go on the left side or on the right side. So if you recall, this is called the hemiketal. Hemi because it's like a hemisphere or half. It's a cycle. Ketal because this is from a ketose. So here are the rules. First, draw a five-member drink. So I'll draw a pentagon. Second is, to, second is to put oxygen at top. This is a rule. Third is to add sticks. These are your bonds. Number four is to put the CH2OH, this one at carbon number six. Again, if your sugar is D sugar, the CH2OH will be upwards. If you have an L sugar, the CH2OH is downwards. This is a D sugar, so this will go upwards. Then where do we put the hydroxyl group? This one. Down, right, left, up. So this is on the left side, so it will go up. Next, let's distribute this one, the CH2OH, carbon number one. So since OH is upwards, this will go downwards. Next is to distribute the hydrogen atoms. Down, right, left, up. So this is on the right side, so it will go down. This is on the left side, so this will go up. Right, down, left, up. This one supposedly should go up, but since CH2OH took that place, this will be forced to go down. So this is your Hayworth projection for D fructose. Now this, the complete name would be beta D fructofurenose. Fructo because this is a fructose sugar. Furenose because this is a five-membered ring. D because this is a D sugar. Beta because the OH and the methanol, CH2OH, are pointing on the same side. They are upwards. So this is a beta configuration. Next, let's convert this aldohexose into its Hayworth projection. Again, aldoses usually forms pyranose, a six-membered ring. So same thing happens. This is positively charged. This will become negatively charged. This one is negatively charged. This one is positively charged. So this will combine to form OH. This one would make a bridge here with this oxygen forming your hemiacetal. So the step in drawing the Hayworth projection is first draw a six-membered ring. 
So that's your hexagon. Put the oxygen at top there. Okay, so put it here, not here. Then put the sticks or the bonds. Next rule is to put CH2OH or carbon number 6. D upwards. So we put it here. Then put the OH. This is on the right side. So meaning it will go down. Okay, so now let's distribute the remaining atoms. Down right or right down, left up. This one is on the left side, so this will go up. This one left, up, left, up, left, up. But since it's already taken place by the CH2OH, it will be forced to go down. OH. OH is down, right? So down. This one is H. This one is H. So in this spot, it's given that you have your hydrogen here. So this will be your hydrogen. The full name would be alpha D galactopyranose. Galacto because this is a galactose. Pyranos because this is a six-membered ring. D because this is a D sugar. Alpha because alpha because this methanol or CH2OH is pointing upwards, but your OH is pointing downwards. So opposite direction, alpha. Hence the name alpha D galactopyranose.